So hey guys, my name's Paul. Also with me today is Chantel. Hey Chantel. <laughs> Hello Paul. Good to see you. Today we are going to be talking to Benedict Simcox and her daughter Kez. Welcome guys. Thank you for joining us today. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Benedict Simcox and I am Chief Exec of Family Voice Surrey, which is a parent care forum we'll talk about later. I'm Kez, I'm the middle child. Um, I'm 19 and I have all hidden disabilities, I think. Yes. Yeah. Although the Tourette's doesn't feel very hidden to me <laughs> compared to the rest of them. So Kez, are you happy to sort of disclose and just talk a little bit about your hidden disabilities? Yeah, of course. Um, so I was diagnosed with autism first when I was about 11. Um, and that's been my primary diagnosis pretty much forever, but is more of a secondary now. Um, and then when I was around 16, I was diagnosed with a few other things. Could you please list them? I don't remember. So we have <laughs> sorry, generalised anxiety disorder, mm. depression, eating disorder, traits of PTSD, so post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and then she's since developed and been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome yeah. Tourette's and functional neurological neurological disorder came this year yeah and we are waiting for a diagnosis of ADHD which is likely to come in October so there's clearly quite a few um challenges there I think there are challenges in that I mm. I suspect we'll we'll kind of get a, a bit of picture with mm. the ADHD diagnosis but I suspect that Kez has a is just neurodiverse she's yeah. got a different brain and that we label as autistic adhd the tourette's the fnd so that your uh montana yeah. um, which um you can explain to, to, uh, it to everybody in a moment why we're calling it montana and the words uh that you use can you sort of predetermine them or do they just come from somewhere and you don't know where Montana, which is what we call her tics, has a foul mouth. <laughs> the thing that's harder as a mum is when she starts hitting herself <coughs> or scratching. So uh, there are times when she's got awful scabs all over her face because she scratched herself to bleeding point or she's hit her, hit her hand on a, on a desk so hard that she's got a bruise. By being neurodiverse do you know guys is it something where these conditions cross over is that sort of typical yeah comorbidities is what you'd call that and it's really really common so I love it because I follow uh, various Instagram pages and Tourette's pages on in no Instagram autism pages and Tourette's pages on Instagram and they both talk about comorbidities and they both have like overlaps but they talk about comorbidities within Tourette's or within autism. I'm like, I'm just a comorbid human. In terms of diagnosis, was it something that was staggered? How did you kind of get to the point where you thought, I have this condition? Because his history with mental health yeah. difficulties has meant that she's had a number of all, uh, kind of overall assessments and every single one comes up with autism as the primary diagnosis. I'm just interested to know how you kind of lead with your conditions. Do, is there one which, not trumps, but is like, you know, do, do you say I have comorbidities or do you say I have autism or do you say I have Tourette's? I usually say I have Tourette's because it's the only one that people can really notice. Um, I tend to mask around new people anyway, so the autism only really comes up either if I tick it or if... Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> how is Tourette's perceived how do you see people reacting to you with it it feels like everyone should know about it by now because it's sort of where I live on the internet but then I forget that not everyone lives there on the internet so when I go out and people are like mm, that's really weird <laughs> I just get a bit confused do you think the sunflower is needed in society yeah, I love it. I it's it's given me so much confidence. Like like we were saying with um Tourette's out and about. Um when I wear my sunflower lanyard, I also have a Tourette's action card now. Um I just feel a bit safer. Kez has been using a sunflower lanyard for years. Since they started. Yeah, since they started, really, because every now and again she would either not be able to speak or she'd freeze up or she'd look very um 
anxious and something was wrong and that that just gave her a reassurance that it says to the world kind of leave me alone or help me but don't judge and don't yeah. get in my way when I first used, started using the sunflower lanyard it was with my eldest in in mind who would never touch <laughs> a sunflower lanyard let alone wear one <laughs> but if I wore it and he had a meltdown in the road, at least I had something even, you know, you know that not everybody knows about it, but if they do, then there's immediately a, rather than looking at me as if I am a really, really, really bad mother, there was a kind of, often it's pity, which is never brilliant, but it's better than better. blame. <laughs> um, but even if they don't, it gave me a little bit of, confidence that I've done as much as I can to show to the world subtly that we're a bit different. If there was a reaction that you got from someone from wearing a sunflower, mm -hmm. what would it be? The first thing that I want as a mum is not to feel blamed for what mm -hmm. often appears inappropriate. I'm inappropriate. It might be that I have a child in a pushchair that looks far too old to be in a pushchair. And the amount of blame that you get mm. in looks from people, mm. if that's the case, in my experience, most of the time it's been disapproval. If society could have compassionate awareness of the fact that some of us have different lives, that's all we're after, really. I'm just trying to understand just a little bit more about how you kind of deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and what is a kind of typical day like for you as a mum? So for a start, luckily, and you know, I'm very fortunate in that I also have a lovely husband. You know, we've been together for a long time. A long, so long, long, it, long. We're, we're a team mm -hmm. around this. The other thing that's really important is that it's my normal. I haven't known anything else. I needed as an emotional support. Yeah on a daily hourly weekly basis pretty much it's well, it varies well. but I'm I think it's fair to say that they kind of all expect me to be on call at any given time how do you cope has it tested you your mentality you know your, your mindset your your oh, yeah. stability it must be challenging for you as well I have struggled with anxiety and depression for a long time. No, no you're um, lying. Faking the plant. Sorry. <laughs> Mum's faking her um, I have, you know, I have, <laughs> I'm on, I'm on antidepressants mm. at the moment. I'm, I'm I've it. had over the, over the years, I've had a number of physical health problems. <laughs> it's really, really common when mm. you look, parent carers often yeah. have their own health issues to deal with because stuff comes out one way or the other doesn't it um sleep is an issue one of the things that people often don't realize is the amount of paperwork it takes to support a, a child with disabilities um and that is it's it's a huge amount i think <laughs> as humans we have often more resilience than we think we do and i think one of the big things is you have to realize that you as mum or dad are probably not going to be enough. And that's very, very hard to, number one, I'm not enough for my child. Number two, I have to ask for help, which means acknowledging that I can't do everything. If there's any advice to someone that you want to give, and it can be to somebody experiencing the same conditions, Benedict or, or Kez, can you just, do you have any advice for people? I think my advice is it'll be okay. No. I don't. I don't know what okay will look like for you, but it, it will be okay. Um, That's a bit silly. The, the, where do you find support? The way you do, find, there's loads of things and it will depend on the condition you're dealing with. It will depend on your ability, it'll depend on where you are. It exists. We are actually, as, as much as there are issues and there's a lot to work on, actually in the United Kingdom, I think we're very fortunate. We have systems in place that should help they don't a lot of the time but they are at least there um you take it take it five minutes at a time if that's all you can manage and if you can't manage five minutes go and lock yourself in the loo for 30 seconds um if you can get through 30 seconds you can probably get through the next 30 seconds mm. thank you kez do you want to say anything or you've already uh, yeah 
my biggest advice usually is to find community, whether you've just been diagnosed with something or you've got a child that's been diagnosed with something or you've got a friend who's been diagnosed with something. Um, I would find a community and do a little bit of research because not like excessively because I'm a bit obsessive. That's not necessary for everyone. But um, yeah, no, having people um, who get it is really nice especially if you've been diagnosed with something, I think. I think, Kez, you're very, very, very fortunate to have a mum like Benedict. Yeah. It's been a real pleasure talking to you both. And um, thank you for just sharing your, your, your thoughts and, you know, having a conversation. It's been lovely. Really interesting. Thank you very much. Really nice to meet you, Kez.